Tonight, a former executive casino host says the Las Vegas shooter Stephen Paddock would sit in a casino for hours, staring at other gamblers, sizing up video poker machines, looking for the one with the biggest potential payoff. And investigators are still taking a look into Paddock's life tonight. Fox News correspondent Caroline Shively has details from Las Vegas. Investigators are now looking into whether gunman Stephen Paddock was planning more attacks, including a car bomb. I'm not going to give any briefing or details about any of the examinations at this point. Officials not saying whether an autopsy has been completed on attacker Stephen Paddock's body. This as agents are now looking into whether Paddock had been sizing up other music festivals. Police say Paddock rented another room in Las Vegas in September when the Life is Beautiful Music Fest was taking place. And Fox has learned two months before Sunday's massacre, a person named Stephen Paddock booked a hotel in Chicago overlooking the Lollapalooza Music Festival as it was taking place. Now, as a precaution, Chicago is stepping up security ahead of this weekend's Chicago Marathon. The FBI is involved. ATF is involved. Meantime, police in Boston confirm investigators looking into Paddock came across mention of the city's Fenway Park. Police saying they're also aware of reports Paddock had been researching hotels surrounding Fenway. The investigation is going as being led by the folks in Las Vegas, and we're in constant conversation with the Fusion Center here in Massachusetts, which is in constant contact with them. This, as President Trump now says his administration will look at whether bump stocks should be banned. The devices found in Paddock's hotel room can modify semi-automatic guns so they mimic automatic weapons. We'll be looking into that over the next short period of time. Meanwhile, at this point, any motive remains unclear. In Las Vegas, Caroline Shively, Fox News. Firefighters are who we call when we're in desperate need of help. But for those in the fire service across the Ozarks, the tables have turned. Firefighters face many hazards, and our Brennan Gurley tells us how one disease is making them the ones in need. It's well into double digits. Um, as far as the, the personal friends and people that I've known um, or come across that have had some sort of cancer issue. On a day-to-day -day basis, firefighters are exposed to life-threatening conditions. Because we are in hazardous situations where all kinds of materials are actively burning, there's a tremendous amount of uh, material that's absorptive. Cancer has become the leading cause of line-of-duty deaths for firefighters. 60% will die from cancer compared with 20% of the general public, according to a recent study. We've gone to great lengths, but it's, it's a fight that uh, we'll continue to fight. It's easy to see that firefighting is among one of the most dangerous occupations, but what you don't see has many of them scared for their health. From brain cancer and skin cancer to testicular and cervical cancer, firefighters seem to be more susceptible to these kinds of cancer. You have to be proactive and stay ahead of this, otherwise it is too late. While firefighters are focused on putting out the flames, Chief Kelly Cardin is working to make sure his firefighters' health is a long-term priority. We're constantly reminding each other, you know, hey, you know, take your hood off. Hey, get your gear washed. Hey, let's make sure that we take care of ourselves. Education and awareness are playing the biggest role in helping change the culture. We just start that message from the beginning of protecting yourself, keeping your gear clean, um, paying attention to the rules that are in place to keep you from hopefully having problems later on. Reporting in Springfield, Brennan Gurley, Fox 5 News. And finally tonight, high above the Earth, two NASA astronauts made the first of three planned spacewalks this morning. Commander Randy Bresnik and Mark Van opening the hatch into space over the Mediterranean Sea at 8 a.m., ready to work. More gorgeous. Heavenly than I saw when it was out here eight years ago. It's good to see you back outside, comrade. Thank you. Good to be here. Thanks to everybody who brought us here. They are working to replace a latch on the robotic arm on the International Space Station that malfunctioned in August. The latch needs replaced before an orbital ATK supply ship launches next month. The Canadian-built arm has been in orbit for 16 years. The next two spacewalks are scheduled for October 10th and 18th. Well, definitely cool to see those images from the International Space mm -hmm. Station. But back here on Earth, we're seeing some above average temperatures here in the Ozarks. And the humidity is pretty out of this world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the humidity is very high today and tonight, and that will continue to be the case tomorrow as well, as we still see a few scattered showers across the area. Also watching Tropical Storm Ney that has our attention because it is a forecast to move into the Gulf of Mexico. Right now, it doesn't look all that organized on the satellite. It's affecting parts of Nicaragua and Honduras in a Central America. America, you can see a cluster of thunderstorms near the center of circulation there. Uh, Nate is forecast to move back out over water and then affect parts of the Yucatan 
before potentially making landfall in Louisiana, Mississippi, or Alabama, even into the uh, panhandle of Florida as we work into Saturday night and Sunday. So we're going to have to watch Nate carefully. Right now, only forecast to be a Category 1 hurricane, but the water is very warm and there is potential for additional intensification as Nate moves over the Gulf.